For those who joined us with uh, masses in the hall, it's good to be back in the church, isn't it? Those who had to go somewhere else, well, it's good to have you back. Uh, this, uh, this whole renovation project has been so uh, extraordinary and special to, to see the church become more radiant, more, uh, a brighter church which all points to the radiance of Jesus, his, his brightness to us. Anyways, but today's, uh, today's readings actually made me think of a time when I, um, I got to visit the Holy Land about 10 years ago. And uh, in, the, in, in the city of Jerusalem, there's a section that's just for Jewish people. And in that section, I just noticed that every, it seemed like every door had this little decoration on it, on the doorpost. You know, you have the two, you know, picture a door, a door frame, and on one of the posts, there was a little decoration. It looks like a little tube that was bolted on the wall at an angle, kind of crooked. I just was really intrigued by that, and I just kept noticing it everywhere, and what is that about? And then every now and again, I saw people as they entered passed through the door where they would touch it or or they'd kiss their hand and then touch it it's like what is that about well turns out that it is inside that little tube is a little scroll on which is written the first reading today which specifically the part that jesus quotes in the gospel in the first reading we hear, Fear the Lord your God and keep throughout the days of your life all his statutes. But the part that's written there is what's called the Shema. Shema is the Hebrew word for hear, listen. So what they have on that little scroll is just this part. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words, which I enjoin on you today. Jesus is asked, what's the first commandment? First of all the commandments. Now this is, a part, this is coming from a scholar of the law, one who would have known the Torah, the first five books of, of the Old Testament. And as a scholar, you know, he knows that it's not just ten commandments. In the Torah, there's actually 613 commandments. God gives over 600 commandments to his people Israel. So when he asks the question, which one's the first? Which one's the most important? Which one's the greatest? It's a significant question. And Jesus replies, it's the Shema. Everyone knows it. You have it on your do doorpost. Here, O Israel, the Lord is our God and the Lord only. You shall love Him. That's the greatest first commandment. We, we really ought to tune in. What does that mean? So, first of all, uh, the people of Israel would have it on their doorpost, and still to this day, Jews have what it's called the mezuzah, a mezuzah is this little tube with the scroll in it, and they put it on every doorpost in the house. Not just the front entrance, but every doorway. And they see it as a, as a reminder. We have to remember. They put it there because God asked them to, in fact. Because right after that first reading today, the next verses say, uh, keep repeating these words to your children, recite them at home, and when you are away, when you lie down, when you get up, Bind them on your arm as a sign, and let them be as a pendant on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. Our God is a good Father. He's trying to instruct us, to show us the way. And He tells us how to pray. He tells us what to do. What are the things that are going to help us keep the faith? He was, when he spoke these words in the, in the, in this, in the book of Deuteronomy, this is over 10,000 years ago. A long time ago, God started speaking to his people and trying to instruct them. 
And these people were going out into a world that was polytheistic. There were many gods everywhere. Everyone seemed to have a different god, or they believed in many, many gods. And this is the earth-shattering truth that there's one God. So he's, he's trying to help them. Hey, remember, there's, there's actually only one God, the Lord alone. And you ought to love him. Love demands a response. Love demands a response. If you, if you get down on one knee and you, and you say, will you marry me to another? A, a response is necessary. <clears throat> if, if, if a woman spends herself doing so much to love her husband and love her kids, and she gets no response, there isn't mutual love. Love demands a response because love desires nothing else but relationship. Our God has loved us so intensely, He sustains all that exists. You and I exist only because He holds us in existence. God is, is, is He's not just a wispy ghost floating around. God is the force that gives rise to everything that exists. God is that one being. He is being itself. He is the only thing necessary. Everything else is contingent. So that God of ours loves us intensely. He sustains all that exists in love. That love demands a response, which is why it's the first commandment that we must love him because he has loved us. That's helpful to remember. Think of your wedding bands. Wedding rings exchanged in the marriage rite. The, the couples hold, they're facing each other, holding the, their beloved's hand and, and the, the husband starts and he says take this ring and wear it as a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit he places the ring on her finger and then she says the same she takes the ring and she says wear this sign as a, wear this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity too often I think we think that the ring is supposed to remind you of the commitment that you made. Oh, I made a commitment. Oh yeah, gotta get my act together. No, it's actually a reminder that someone else made a commitment to you. It reminds you someone else loves me so much they gave everything for me. Love demands a response. So it is with the words of today's first reading, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord alone, and therefore you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Take these words to heart, which I enjoin on you today. And God knows that we need concrete reminders. He says, repeat these words. Repetitive prayer, God himself, thousands of years ago said, repetitive prayer is crucial because we forget so easily. Keep repeating them to your children, recite them when you are at home, when you are away. How many of us don't pray when we're on vacation or when we're traveling? It's so easy to miss mass when you're on the road. I hear it far too often. Oh, Father, yeah, we missed Mass. We were, we were traveling. We were camping. Well, if you love the Lord your God, it's easy to say you love Him above all things. But whatever you did instead of going to Mass, you actually love more than you love God. It's that simple. It's hard. We all... I mean, at the end of the day, if we're honest, we don't love God with all our strength, with all our mind, with all our soul. Come on, let's be real. That's hard to do. It's hard to love your spouse that you see every day and hear from every day in a particular closeness. But we're called, it's the first commandment, to love God, to really love Him. Um, and that love demands a response. It needs to be shown. We're human, so concrete things matter. Repeating words, yes, important. When we lie down, when we get up, do you pray at night? Do you pray in the morning? Maybe it's not the first thing you do. You know, maybe the first thing you do is make that cup of coffee, and that's necessary. 
But do you pray in the morning? And do you close your day at some point in the evening before you sleep with prayer? These things matter. Relationship, it, it, the love demands a response. There needs to be connection on a concrete way. It can't just be an idea. Benedict XVI put it very beautifully, or Pope Emeritus, that being a Christian is not a matter of an ethical choice or a lofty idea. It's the result of a personal encounter, an encounter with an event, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive purpose, direction. So that relationship needs to be fostered with concrete things. You know, that's why we, the Lord even revealed the rosary through Mary. Rosary is a great physical thing. There's actually an, an indulgence granted for those who pray the rosary with a physical rosary in their hands. Tangible. We have to be able to touch. We have to say. Just like married couples. You can't just think, oh, I love my spouse above all things or whatever. You have to say, I love you. And you can't just say it once in your whole marriage. <laughs> you have to repeat it in different ways if you can. And you have to mean it. And you have to act it out, therefore. If you actually love, then you have to show gestures of love. Devoted spouses, when you speak of a devoted husband, you're talking about someone who does concrete, tangible things. He brings me flowers. He takes me out to dinner every now and again, whatever. Devotion is, the, is, is love. If we love God above all things, with all our strength, with all our soul, with all our mind, then it, it, it manifests. We practice it concretely. As a... Um, and we, and we need reminders. So like just October 2nd this year uh, was my seventh anniversary from when I was ordained a deacon. I was ordained a deacon and I made my promises to be celibate for the rest of my life, to pray the, the prayers of the church, to be faithful to God in service, in obedience to my bishop. And uh, October 7th this year, 2nd this year, my, my, one of my classmates texted me a picture from our ordination day. And it kind of it took me back, and it just shocked me. Wow, it's already been seven years. And, it just, and then I started to look up my photo album of, of other pictures from our nation day, and it just brought back the remembering kind of realized in me some of those graces. It brought back the truths that I remember just being elated by. Wow, God has loved me so much that he prepared this. Day. It was like a wedding day, and I, I, was, I was just so happy that day. And, it was in St. Peter's Basilica, so it was just glorious. And I kept thinking, like, the Lord knew this day. He had prepared this day my whole life. I would never have seen myself here now, but God loved me first and prepared me for this day where I could return my love in this decisive manner. So photo albums go a long way. It's a concrete, visible reminder. It can relive the graces of marriage or other historic, important moments in our family, of our youth. It can remind us of the innocence and the joy of our young life. Pictures matter. So it is with our faith. We need crosses. I mean, the, cro the crucifix on the wall in, in every room, in every bedroom, it matters. It, it can really help realize, it helps us remember, but it helps realize the graces of God's love for us, His love poured out. It's kind of like the little tomb, the little mezuzah that the, the Jewish people have. Something physical you can look at and touch and just be aware of. The, the Jewish people even believe that having the mezuzah, reminding them of the Shema, is a blessing and protection to the house, to the home. It's not just remembering. Remembering realizes, it brings to reality the truths of it. So it becomes a blessing to the home. So love demands response, and our God has loved us um, in a manner beyond measure. And He is showing us, He is teaching us how to love Him back. It's literally a command to love Him with all our strength. He's very specific. You have to love with your mind. You have to love with all your soul, with who you are, with your identity. And you have to love with your strength. It takes effort. But more than that, he even gives us concrete things that serve as reminders to help us realize the graces of his love in a, in a perfect way. And the supreme, the most perfect way that he has given us to love him back is the Mass. Where it is a remembering. Doing the, we're doing this in remembrance of him but the thing is when we do the things that God asks us to do to remember him 
in this, like the Mass, and the Mass is the perfect form, he actually becomes truly present. The memory of his love for us poured out is actually bringing to reality that event on this altar.